welcome to another episode of Jim's Lama Garden. Okay, so as you know, this is where the uh, the basil was planted. Now, what I've done is I've um, picked picked what basil I needed, and basically taken the leaves, and I've um, ground them up with um, one part of the the leaves from the uh, the basil. Um, so if we get one cup of that, and then uh, one and a half cups of the um, pine nuts, which you can buy from a supermarket, they're reasonably expensive, but um, you know they're about uh, for a 100 gram bag, if you buy a small 100 gram bag, they're about £3, which is quite expensive. But uh, if you buy a large bag, which is 500 grams, uh, it doesn't work out too bad. Um, and then you mix that with um, a cup and a half of olive oil um, and, um, and a, um, three or four garlic cloves. Um, and then mix all that together, um, uh, either, in your, either in your blender or your um, pestle and mortar. And what you can make is this, which is basically pesto. Uh, which you can put with um, any pasta really, really quick pasta dish. So all you need to do is um, um, boil up your um, pasta until it's, um, until it's cooked and then mix in a, f um, a few spoonfuls of this um, and you make really nice um, um, sort of pesto pasta. Um, now you don't need a lot of basil, I grew quite a lot, I put quite a lot of seed in and um, so I, you know, I basically fill this in, entire thing. All I actually needed to make about, um, um, probably about Two, two or three litres of pesto, which is more than enough for us, uh, was basically these these plants here. So this was made with a mixture of the uh, the purple you can see in there, the purple and the green pesto, um, uh, sorry, um, basil. I also um, did one that was just purely green as well. But um, as you can see, these plants now have run to seed, so these really haven't finished. So what I'll actually do is I'll actually feed these uh, remaining plants to the chickens. But um, next year I'll probably grow probably about um, probably about 20 plants in about a metre square, and that'll be more than enough to do what we need to do. So this year I overdid it a little bit with the uh, with the basil, but uh, that's basically what happened to the basil. I um, blended it up, as I say, one cup of basil, uh, one and a half cups of um, pine nuts. Um, sorry, one cup of pine nuts, one and a half um, cups of olive oil, which is quite a lot of olive oil really, um, and some garlic. You could put salt and pepper in if you wish. Oh, I didn't um, bother. I found it was okay as it was, and then uh, you end up with um, sort of um, a few jars of this, which will last you for the year. Okay, so a quick update on the peppers. I don't know if you can see, but um, the sweet peppers have actually come into their own. Now, quite clearly, the fact that they're growing now tells me. Obviously, you know we're into. Um, October now. This this tells me that I was too late in planting the seeds. Um, so what I need to do really next year is plant them a lot early and get them started off in the greenhouse um, a lot earlier than I did this year. But the you know they have come through. As you can see, I've got quite a few little peppers. There's a reasonable sized one there, just under there, if you can see. And then just behind here, there's a couple of reasonably reasonably big ones. And then I've got a couple of other small ones up here. So they have come through, and, and to be honest with you, I mean, I, I don't typically have a lot of success with peppers. Um, I, I often find that either slugs get at them or they just don't grow properly or, or whatever. But this year they have done well. Uh, but unfortunately, it's late now, and obviously the days are getting shorter, so the plants are starting to shut down um, because of the light or the, you know, the amount of light that they've got. But these are really um, coming into their own now. You know, there's lots of flowers, there's lots of little fruit coming on. Um, so I have got sort of 20 or so peppers growing, there's another one there if you can see, there is sort of 20 odd peppers growing, which is a shame, you know, I should have um, put them in a bit earlier, so next year I will have another go at growing them, um, but I'll try and get the seeds going in February in the house, because um, I don't have a heated greenhouse, um, and I'll 
I'll try and get the plants established earlier, earlier on. So when the nice weather comes in, sort of um, the end of May, June time, they can really get going and um, try and get a much bigger plant with much bigger peppers or, or many more peppers earlier on so they'll actually develop a bit better. But that's what the peppers look like. Um, the cucumbers, I don't know if you can see, but this plant here was a late one. Uh, we have had quite a few cucumbers, but um, I don't know if you can see this this bit here, this branch that's, that's actually grown down. I've still got cucumbers coming. Um, it's still uh, sort of growing quite well. I am still watering. Um, this one here is shut down. That's the um, that's the one that's um, grafted. Um, that one shut down a couple of months ago, um, so that's that's kind of finished. But uh, this one is still growing strong. This is the cucumber um, female F1 variety. This is the one I always grow. Uh, I've already had about five cucumbers off this particular plant. But as I say, you know, it's still going, it's still trying to grow more cucumbers. If anything come of these, I'm not quite sure, because it's, you know, it is getting a bit late in the season. But um, that's what the peppers look like at the minute. Okay, so even though the uh, the button squashes and pumpkins that are dying off around the, uh, the masher, as you can see, it's still growing strong. Uh, and the masher has been growing here all year. Um, as you know, masher were a kind of tubers that are kind of um, sort of sort of short carrot shaped um, um, tubers that you actually eat from the um, from the grounds. Now all of the it's actually part of the nasturtium family, as you can tell by the by the leaves. And what I need to do is wait for this to start to die back. It's nowhere near dying back yet, as you can see. Um, it's actually starting to form a few um, flower buds on the end, but the I need to wait for this to die back before I do anything with it. Uh, and all you need to do is wait for it to die back, and then um, as soon as it does, you can take off all the top growth, uh, dispose of that, and then underneath, um, obviously in the ground, you'll be able to dig up the uh, the chews, which is the part that you eat. Okay, so I've managed to do a bit of weeding in the second tunnel. Um, I've still got some more weeds up at the top though, which I'll get out later today. But I just wanted to quickly show you the, the second batch of um, calabrese or green broccoli. As you can see, it's forming, forming the heads. Now, I don't expect these to get particularly big. Um, this one here, um, as you can see, is already, already run to flower. So uh, when they get to kind of um, this big, hang on, there's one just up here. When they get to kind of that big, I don't think they're going to get much bigger than that. So what I'll be doing is cropping these in the next week or so. What I'm looking for is if you look at the, the little um, sort of florets, um, as soon as they start to get large, um, like these are here, um, that's just before they start to open, so they're not going to get any bigger than that. So, um, you know, the crop that we get off this isn't going to be anywhere near as big as the, one, as the crop um, that we had earlier this year. But, uh, you know, you can, you can take the tops off and then hopefully... Uh, what will happen is, like for example this one here, you can take the top one off and then these smaller ones lower down, they'll form a little bit later, so we might get a second um, second crop off this same plant. But what I'm going to do is most certainly take the top ones out uh, in the next week or so. And um, the way to store, either, either eat them fresh, obviously, the other way you can do it is just to chop it up into, um, you know, sort of small, small pieces and then quickly blanch them. Um, just for uh, 30 seconds or so in boiling water and then you can drain them off put them straight into cold water because you don't want the cooking process to continue put them into ice cold water take them out, drain them off, dry them off and then put them in the freezer and they'll store in the freezer for a good six months but that's what the broccoli or the calabrese looks like at the moment okay as you can see the broccoli is still doing pretty well we've already um, we've already um, had a few meals off this broccoli but as you can see it's developing really quickly. We'll probably eat um, a lot of this today, but as you can see, some of it's going too far. As soon as you start to see flowers forming like that, that's basically gone too far. So, but uh, there are some good heads, um, like this one here. That's a nice head. Um, that one there at the back. So we are still going to have a few, a few more feeds off this. And as I explained last time, for example, this one, I took the main head off, uh, the main head off. The plant, which is would, which would have been something like that, or slightly bigger, and then you get these side ones um, developing as well. So you know you can get two or three crops off the one plant. But I must admit, this variety, um, this variety of um, of um, broccoli, I, I, I'm not overly impressed with it. To be honest with you, um, I don't think I'll be growing it again um, next year. And it was a 
I can't remember the variety name now. Um, I'll try and put it along the bottom of the video. But the um, I just don't think it's grown particularly well in my ground. It may well be okay for other people. But um, I found that it's um, the F1 hybrid that I grew um, earlier in the year was a lot more successful than this has been. Um, so I think uh, what I'll do in the future is um, grow more of that as opposed to this particular variety. Okay, I've been digging up the last few potatoes over the last um, day or so. Um, this row here was the last full row which I dug up yesterday. And the ground, even though we've had quite a lot of rain, uh, the ground was reasonably dry underneath. However, it's a little bit sticky on the potatoes. Now, what I did with this bit here was covered the potato rows up with um, plastic. And what I've found is actually underneath, as I expected, the, the ground has stayed much drier and it's been a lot easier to dig out the potatoes. So I am going to continue digging the rest out today, or as many as I can do today. Um, but um, covering the ground with plastic like this, if you're not able to get the potatoes out straight away, has kept the ground dry. And when you obviously, it's easier, you, you know, you're lifting less weight to dig the potatoes out and also the potatoes are cleaner underneath. So um, if, you, if you have got um, uh, potatoes in that you've not dug out yet, um, and your ground is dry, what I suggest you do is cover it with a bit of plastic like this and what that'll do is it'll keep the ground dry underneath um, and when you do get round to digging your potatoes out um, the ground will be that much drier and easier to get the potatoes uh, from the ground. Okay, just digging some more potatoes out and you may well be asking why is it taking so long for me to get all the potatoes out. Basically this year um, I've had a lot of bindweed in this part of the, um, the allotment. Um, I don't know if you can see in the um, in here, this is all this is all bindweed root, and unfortunately, the root goes down about um, going up to two foot into the ground. So what I'm doing is, as I'm digging along, I'm actually double digging. So that basically means you dig dig the potatoes out, and then you put the the, the fork in again like that. So basically, what you're doing is you're going down a double fork depth. Um, now, not everybody can do this. It depends what you've what kind of soil you've got. Um, a lot of people, if you go down sort of two foot you will get subsoil so you get clay or gravel or whatever uh, which you may not want to bring to the top so you, you know you need to kind of try it and judge to see I've, I've got sort of topsoil if you like going down a couple of foot here so uh, you know I can afford to dig down and the other good thing about that is as well as obviously as it rains the, the nutrients will wash through the soil and so they typically sit lower down if you double dig like I'm doing now and fetch up the, uh, the bottom layer of soil, basically what you're doing is you're bringing the minerals back onto the top which is where the plants can get at it so that's going to make your um, soil a lot more um, fertile and you'll be able to um, you know sort of grow bigger and stronger vegetables next year so that, you know so it's worthwhile doing on a number of um, number of counts really but the that's why it's taking so long to get the you know the remainder of the potatoes I've only got a few left it's just these here I just thought it was worth showing you um, this this wheelbarrow here all of this bindweed you can see in there um, has basically come out of just this area here um, so about um, you know a, a sort of eight foot row uh, was left and uh, probably about three three rows there so not very much ground ruin I've got all of that root out now unfortunately it's underneath the paths um, I don't know if you can see here, but you can see a few sort of roots sticking through there. Um, and I've, I've had the path up a couple of times um, to get it all out, but there's, there's always seemed to be a little bit left. You only need to leave um, about half an inch or so, you know, something like that in the ground, and that will grow again with bindweed. So it, it is a really difficult weed to get rid of, and it's one of those perennial weeds that, um, you know, it is herbaceous, it does die down to the ground. And then any bit of root that's left, and it, as I say, it just go down two foot. Um, will will um, grow again, and uh, you know your plot will be um, full of it before you know where you are. Now, last year I didn't get any bindweed at all worth talking about, and any that I did see, I dug straight out. Um, and the year before I had none at all. Um, but this year, this this entire area here, where the potatoes were, has been absolutely snided with um, bindweed. There's been loads of it, and I've been pulling it all out. But of course, you know, unless you dig the root out, you can't kill it. So, uh, and there's no real weed killer that. that that'll actually kill this, um, you know, that won't cause damage to vegetables. So unfortunately, the only real way of getting rid of it is to keep digging at it, weakening it, um, and any that you see, fetch it out as soon as you can. Um, so, as I say, I've, I've double dug all of this now. 
hopefully I've got all of it out. Um, it's more than likely there is some bits still left in there um, because the root does tend to snap off when um, you know when you're sort of digging it out. But anyway, that's the um, the potatoes. Um, I'm just getting these last few out now um, and um, digging all of this um, weed out. Also, I said. Okay, so in the greenhouse, the um, the rot hasn't hasn't sort of um, the blight hasn't really developed much further. I have got the the odd fruit like this here, um, if you can see. Let's quickly take them two off here, so you can see that that's that's blight on there. So I'll obviously dispose of those. But um, I've stopped watering the greenhouse altogether now um, and let it dry dry out. This is going to do two things. It's it's going to encourage the tomatoes to ripen um, so I can sort of empty the greenhouse out. Now there are some obviously some tomatoes in here that are still green so what I'm going to do is um, in the next week I'm just going to take all of the tomatoes off if they're green or, or red. Um, obviously you can eat tomatoes whilst they're green so but, but what I'm going to do is put the green tomatoes in the window in the house um, and let them ripen off in there and what I'm going to do is clean out the, uh, the greenhouse altogether get rid of all of the um, tomato plants. Obviously because I've had this sort of scare of blight as you can see here as well I've got some blight on there. What I'm going to be doing is obviously disposing of any of those um, in the um, recycling bin and what I'll do is I'll dig all of this soil out and I'll give it um, a really good clean out on the inside of the greenhouse and uh, you know make sure that there's no spores in here for next year. But that's what the greenhouse looks like at the moment. Okay, so this is what the greenhouse looks like now. As you can see um, from this side, I've taken out all the Alicante tomatoes. Um, I've put all those into the green recycling bin um, because of the uh, bits of blight that I've got on there. Any traces of the plant, tomatoes, leaves, everything have been taken out. Um, and I've covered it over with these, with these metal plates that I can use to, um, or metal trays, that I can use to dry the beans, etc. So I've already picked some runner beans, as you can see here, so they'll stay there and dry out and then I can get the seed out of there. I will pick more, that's not all of them, I'll probably pick about the same again. Um, and then um, I'll also put the, um, the the climbing beans, the French beans in there, so I'll, I'll, I'll dry some of those in here as well. On this side, as you can see, I've, I've taken out about half of the uh, the Moneymaker tomatoes. Um, now, out of, out of those I've picked about about 20 kilos of fruit, so what I've done is I've left in all of the plants that aren't too bad, um, there is still a little bit of blight in here. Um, there's a bit of trace on the bottom there as you can see. But any fruit that's, that was showing any signs I've removed. Um, and I've left these in because they've got a reasonable amount of fruit left on them. Um, that haven't quite ripened off yet. So uh, as I've already got 20, 20, um, 20 kilos of fruit to um, process and get in the freezer. I've left these in um, and then I'll... I'll leave these to ripen off on the plant as best I can. I've just noticed a couple of tomatoes, obviously this one here, that's got that's got some blight on it. And I've just noticed one at the back here as well. So I've removed all of this, all all of the fruit that's got any um, sort, of, sort of blight on it or anything like that. Got that into the, uh, the recycling bin as well. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll leave these in here for the next few days, hopefully some will ripen off, um, if not what I'll do is I'll just remove them, put them on the windowsill like I've done with these here and I'll let them ripen off um, in the sun as best I can. Um, I've also trimmed the uh, grapevine down a little bit, um, I've taken some of the grapevine out, there are still some grapes up here uh, which I'll be picking later today but um, I've tried to get as much sunlight in here as possible to dry it out um, in here because obviously if I dry it out that's going to kill off um, you know any spores or anything like that and also I'm drying um, seeds and stuff like that in here as well. Obviously there are still some plants in here, the uh, the cucumber plants are still going. Um, if we get any more cucumbers or not this year I don't know but um, there are still obviously the fuchsia and bits and bobs growing in here. So what I'll do is I'll um, keep those watered but out of the way, um, just keep them ticking over. But the rest of the greenhouse now I'll let all of the beds dry out. Um, <coughs> So, you know, so it'll overwinter okay. Basically what you don't want is too much moisture in here um, over the winter because that'll, um, you know, basically create the atmosphere to uh, for, for germs and um, sort of bacteria and blight and fungal 
things to to um, sort of survive in here. So I want to keep it as dry as you know as I possibly can do. So I'm, I'm still going to keep the windows open, um, so it's well ventilated. Keep the door open for a bit as well, um, unless we have some really severe winds. Um, and then I'll um, get it nice and dry in here. And then as soon as all of these are out, I'll cover this over as well. Uh, with the boards or the metal plates and then I can um, get it ready for next year. What I will do next year obviously is um, dig out the top um, sort of six, 6 to 12 inches of soil out of here um, and then put that onto the garden, not the allotment but I'll put that onto my um, garden because there's possibly some blight in here and then what I'll do is I'll refresh that by putting some soil in here um, off the allotment and also some potting compost and that just to sweeten it up in there along with of course the chicken manure and the uh, the grass cuttings as well to uh, to get the beds ready for next year but uh, I don't at the moment I don't currently plan to grow anything in here during the winter obviously I could grow some salad and that in here but um, at this present moment in time I've, um, I'm not planning to do that so that's what the greenhouse looks like um, at the moment <laughs> Okay, so I'm just digging some potatoes up and I've come across this worm and I've, I've seen some big worms in my time but this one seems to be, when it was stretched out on the ground it's, it's all sort of curled up at the minute but when it was stretched out on the ground it was over a foot in length so see if I can get him to, see if I can get him to extend a little bit but that is a massive worm so what I'm going to do is put him back in the ground there, where he can do his job and uh, Keep the soil aerated. Okay, so moving on. This is uh, this isn't a vegetable. This is a um, a flower. This is called um, Don Pedro planter. The actual plant is called Don Pedro, um, which is a um, Italian. If you want to know how to spell it? It's like that. Don Pedro, which basically just means Mr. Peters. Plant just means plant, so it basically it means Mr. Peter's plant. So if you search in the internet Don Pedro Planter, you'll you'll see pictures of this. But basically, um, it's a herbaceous plant, and basically what it does is it forms um, like this this corm at the bottom. Obviously, what I mean by herbaceous is at the end of the year, all of the top growth will die down to ground level, so all of this will die off, um, leaving this corm at the bottom. And then if you can keep this frost free um, over the winter then come the spring this will shoot up again exactly like a lot of other plants um, like dahlias etc um, this will this will shoot up again and then you, you, it'll it'll throw up these um, these branches uh, and it grows really quickly and it has this beautiful bright purple um, flowers and it, it's basically covered in flowers when it's um, when it's uh, in in flower and it flowers typically um, sort of early August right the way through to now it's literally just finished flowering as you can see there are still a few buds on it um, but but predominantly it's, it's kind of finished but that's the kind of purple this one is and the arranging of various um, sort of they are mainly purple but you do get darker varieties and lighter you do get some pinks uh, and some really dark purples almost black but um, this one's a very vibrant um, almost like an electric purple but this is the best time of year now to collect seeds off now on each of the flowers what you'll get is one seed and I don't know if you can see but this is basically here that's that's one of the um, the flower pods there and if we just just gently take that off the plant what you'll find is inside um, what you'll do what you'll find is inside the pod if you just take this bit off is you'll get one seed pod um, for each of the, uh, the flowers. Now this is still sort of reasonably green um, these are some that I collected off another plant um, a few weeks ago which is slightly earlier, it's actually the same variety I don't know if you can see but these seeds are basically turned black now, I'll just get a few out so you can see the difference so what will happen is put them in the, you know, collect them and then put them in a um, um, sort of plastic bag like that or an envelope and they'll turn black and they're almost like sort of peppercorns to be honest with you um, now all you need to do is save them as I say in a, in, a, in a paper bag or an envelope over the winter obviously label them up so you know what what they are um, you know, just, just, as I, just as I have there um, and then you know you can put them in the bag as they are green like that or you can just leave them on the plant until they go a bit darker obviously there's one here and when they are ready they'll almost fall out 
So there's another seed pod there. That's that's slightly more ripe than the others. But but every flower, as you can see, this one here, um, every flower head will contain a seed like this. So you'll get plenty of seeds. And they start off quite big like that. So then as they dry out, they get much smaller. Um, and then come the spring, all you need to do is um, plant those uh, in about an inch or so of compost. Um, nice little pot, a pot about that big. Um, plant them about an inch down and you'll get loads more um, Don Pedro plants and they are absolutely fantastic plants. They're very easy to keep, um, they like um, direct sunlight um, and they will reward you with many 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 um, flowers, you know they'll go on flowering for months um, and obviously the, the warmer the weather um, you know the more flowers you'll get really but unlike things like dahlias if you get a bit of rain that typically destroys the flowers with this plant it bounces back um, the, the flowers look a little bit like the flowers off um, Nicotiana, if you've ever grown the tobacco plant Nicotiana. Um, the flowers look similar to that, that's, that, that's basically what they remind me of. But this plant will just keep bouncing back. As long as you can keep it frost free during the winter, that's the one trick. What you need to do is every year, if you do plant them in the borders, what you need to do is dig up the corn and bring them inside because they will not survive any frost. Um, all I'm going to do with this now is leave it in the greenhouse, I'm not going to water it, I'm just going to let it have its last few flowers to dry out and then um, as soon as the compost is dry I can either leave it in the pot if it is perfectly dry and put it in the, put it in the other greenhouse over winter in a, in a, in a frost free um, place or what I can do is turn it, turn it out of the pot, get all the soil off the, off the, uh, the rhizome, this part here and then um, just sort of dry that and um, basically put it in a tray but you could pretty much leave it in the pot uh, and that will survive. Now this plant is two years old so this is its second year so this was planted not this spring but the spring before um, and next year I'm expecting this to be much bigger. They can grow up to about four foot in height um, they do get quite bushy um, as they get to sort of three or four years and as soon as you get them to um, um, sort of a few years older they are a lot more um, resistant against the frost but Obviously they are a Mediterranean plant, they are used to being in countries like Spain, Itali uh, Italy, Portugal, places like that. And so they are used to a hotter climate than the UK. So if you are in the UK um, climate or colder, you most certainly need to um, you know, bring them in in the winter um, you know, for them to survive. Because they won't basically survive a British winter. So that's Don Pedro, um, comes highly recommended by me. It's a nice little plant. Uh, you can either put it in a pot like I have with this one. And then just, you know, as it comes into flower, you can put that into your board and leave it in its pot. Um, or you can, as I say, you can plant it into the ground and grow it, you know, just like a dahlia or whatever. Um, and it'll give you lots of um, nice colour, you know, for three or four months. And, um, and it's, it is, you know, apart from the frost side of things, it is a very robust little plant. Mm -hmm. Okay, quick update on the birdhouse gourds. As I said the other week, you know, there's loads of little gourds all over. You can see them all over. Now, some of them are starting to um, sort of develop. You can see this one here. Um, it's quite a good size. That's, that's not too bad at all. It's probably the biggest one this year. Now, they're nowhere near as big as the ones I had last year. Um, but, the, you know, they are growing. There's one. There's a few down here that are starting to develop. Uh, and all I'm going to do is just leave them on the plant uh, just to see how big they will get. I don't expect them to get massively big, um, but if I just go over here, there is one reasonably large one over here as well, um, on this side. Um, the sunflowers have pretty much gone over now, as you can see, they've kind of flopped over now. There's a sunflower here, look, but there's, there's one here, which is reasonably big. Um, and there's one other that I saw. That one there is a little bit bigger than the rest. I can't find it now, there was one other one somewhere. Um, but they are, they are starting to develop. Um, but as I say, you know, they're nowhere near as big as they were last year. But uh, that's what the, the birdhouse gourds look like. Now, they, they should be big enough for me to save some seed from, if nothing else. Um, and to save the seed, with, you know, the same with any gourd. Now, I haven't had any other gourds around here. Um, so these should be true. Um, you know, the seeds that I get from these should be true birdhouse gourd seeds and all you need to do is as soon as the fruit's developed and uh, the vines died back cut the fruit in half and then you'll find the seeds inside like I showed you last year and then you can plant them again and uh, grow some next year but uh, as I say it is really late we're into September now 
and uh, the birdhouse gourds. This time last year I'd already harvested them and taken them in and the vine had started to die back so these are much later than they were last year. But uh, whilst the weather's still um, still reasonably mild and we've still got a bit of light they will continue to grow so I'll leave them on the vine and um, I'll show you in a few weeks time when I take them off. So I hope this episode was of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below and I'll always get back to you and I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's on the Garden.